This video is going to be a quick introduction to the topic that I like to call math on computers is hard. Uh, I really don't take anybody's word when they say math on computers is easy, seriously, because uh, it's just not. There's lots of things that can go wrong in lots of different ways, and this video is going to show us that it's really easy to get, and this is the technical term, that's a joke, to get wonky answers from a computer. We're going to do an example where we try to use Optim to fit polynomials, which are inherently dangerous for the reasons we'll see, uh, in a linear models framework. Uh, the general solution the world of statistics or machine learning or data science has is, um, well, first, if you can, try to reformat your uh, by whatever function you're trying to minimize that you're passing into Optim. Something might be going wrong with the way you wrote the function. Something might be going wrong with the way uh, the math is involved. But generally, the quickest solutions to getting Optim to work for a function that you know is written reasonably is centering, scaling, or applying both centering and scaling to your data. This is often a helpful strategy. Uh, outside of this video, the words normalizing and standardizing are the words to look for. Uh, normalizing generally means scale your data so that it's between 0 and 1, and standardizing generally means first subtract off the mean and then divide the that centered thing by the standard deviation. I'll write those out uh, on the next page in just a little bit. So after we write out what norm uh, standardizing looks like, uh, we'll go through an example in R where centering, that's going to be just the numerator of standardizing, is sufficient to fit a polynomial, even though that's not the best of strategies, inside the world of a linear model using the function optim. Okay, so here we go. Standardization. Standardization. First centers the data. So if you have a variable x as vectorized subtraction, you'd subtract off the mean of x. That is, if you have a vector of data, x, you will just center it by subtracting off the mean. This will give you, as if you created, let's see, x for centered, if you created a new variable xc, then the mean of xc is going to be 0. At least mathematically that's true. On a computer, you might get some number that's really close to 0. Um, scaling would be a similar sort of thing. Let's create a new vector, xs, where we take our old vector, x, and divide it by the standard deviation of x. In this case, what you'll get out is xs, uh, the standard deviation of xs is equal to 1. And so generally they say standardization is the operation where you both center and scale your vector x. So standardization would then look like, let's create a new vector. I'm just going to name it z here. You first take x and subtract off the mean of that vector. So you center it, and then you scale that vector. And that creates a new vector z. And you would get the combination of both of these centered at 0 and scaled to 1 through this standardization procedure such that the mean of z is equal to 0 and the standard deviation of z is equal to 1. This is generally what standardization looks like. We're going to use just the first centering here in an example in R. Let's jump into that. So here in R, you can see I've already got some work set up for us where I'm trying to put together uh, two ideas from two different videos in, that we've uh, gone over. So if you haven't previously watched the video on 
what linear means inside a linear model, or how to use optim to replicate R's function LM, I highly encourage you to go check out those videos first before continuing with this. So in those previous videos, we use the library ggplot2 to read in the cars data set where we're trying to predict miles per gallon within the city using cars weights. We fit a quadratic line through the data, which luckily for us, ggplot has set up pretty easily. You can see it's a reasonable fit through the data. And the rest of this down here is the linear model we're going to use the function defining a linear model we're going to use that really allows us to have whatever kind of predictor for the data we want such that we then are interested in minimizing the sum of the squared residuals between whatever we observe and whatever our model predicts. Now if we just set that function up and take miles per gallon city as our response variable and the quadratic model the quadratic function within our model matrix from our data frame you will see that optim i'm just going to change 2 to 3 here cuz we need three initial coefficients one for the intercept one coefficient for the linear term, and one coefficient for the quadratic term. And if we just repeatedly call optim, what we'll see is this wonky re uh, returned values that I tried referencing earlier on. Now, let me show you what I mean by wonky. Occasionally, we get positive numbers for the intercept. Sometimes we get negative numbers for the intercept. Sometimes we get numbers really close to zero that are positive or negative or even closer to zero. We can't even pin down with the way we're using this combination of polynomial models within a linear framework or the function optim. We can't pin down even the sign of the intercept or look at for that matter we can't even pin down the sign of the quadratic term in this model. Now this is both a combination of polynomials are not great choices within linear models and an issue that optim itself is not as finely tuned as R's built-in function LM. But that doesn't mean we can't solve the issue like you will often have to do when you're trying to fit something more complex than just a linear model. What I'm going to do is put into the data frame df a new variable named weight c. That is, I'm going to center the variable weight. I'm just going to subtract off the mean of it. And then I'm just going to use weight c in my model that's going to be carried through from the model matrix. And all I really have to do in this case is center that variable, and that'll kind of put on a whole new magnitude our data such that Optin can then be much more happy in its solution. Now look, that is five or six calls to Optin where we're getting basically the same result every time we call it, except for that first time but because Optim is so stable after that, I'm willing to ignore that first one and trust that these are totally reasonable estimated coefficients in this linear model. So here is a quick example on how centering helps us do math on a computer. Centering and scaling of variables is a common trick used in the real world to try to make general optimization routines like Optim be more stable.